Blog Talk Radio. Okay, well, 
Anthony had gone into the room. I stood at the doorway, and if you're familiar with, um, I hate to bring it up again, Ghost Adventures, uh, it's the room with the painting of Anna in the room. I stood in the doorway, and as Anthony's in the room taking pictures, I hear on my right side in my ear, hey, and this is on the second floor. So this was already, this was in daylight. Um, I haven't heard anything since then. I mean, I've heard knocking and stuff like that. But then, Anthony, you were setting up. I was walking up uh, from the first floor to the second floor. I was walking up the stairs. And as I got up to the top of the stairs, what I had heard was um, either it was one woman or two women. Uh, it sounded as though they were talking to each other. Um, I heard it very clear because I turned around and I said to you, Lucy, did you just say something? Right. She didn't say something. She was actually, you were on the second floor? I was sitting on the couch, yeah. That's right. You were sitting on the couch, which you were, what is that, maybe 30 feet away? Mm -hmm. um, and I know your voice very well, but by chance I thought maybe it could have been yours. Um, oh, great. I think we're in chat right now, so I'm trying to do my best to get this up and running. Um, hey, I can see you people. Hi. Connie writes, happy birthday. Thank you. Yes, in case you didn't know, today's my birthday, and this is like the absolute best present ever. <laughs> uh, Phil W. says, where in Ohio is the, is it located? I think I may have mentioned that. Um, it is in Trinway, Ohio. It's uh, right off of Main Street. Like we were saying before, it's a very small town. It's 70, it's uh, 71 miles east of Columbus. Columbus, right. So, um, we got a caller. Oh, they went away. <laughs> if you were, if that was you, call back. Uh, but before we get to the calls, I just wanted to set up tonight. What we're trying to do are two different things. There's, besides what, what we originally set out to do was to invite you guys on board and to be here in Prospect Place from the comfort of your living room, bedroom, office, wherever you are, basement, um, to bring you guys here to Prospect Place and have you guys um, investigate with us by calling in, and we will then put your voice over on speaker in Prospect Place, and then you can ask a question or two, whatever you'd like. And hopefully, and we've got our recorders set up um, in the room here, plus Blog Talk Radio will record this, so we can actually listen um, again. And we may replay this show on Friday so that you guys can hear and listen to see if there was anything that was actually caught. Or if you hear anything right now, as we're here in the room, it, something may come through the airwaves that we don't hear. Um, it's sort of like an EVP session also, but it's over the air. Um, but what I wanted to get to, uh, and we're hoping to do this tonight, are two things. One is um, Lucy and I know, uh, we just recently met a, a woman, uh, Renee, who... Um, Renee Stillwell. Renee Stillwell. She has another show on Blog Talk Radio. I see we have a caller. Um, that may be Renee, but hold on a second. Um, and Renee has a blog talk radio show. I can't for the life of me remember the name right now, but uh, once we get her, once we pick up the phone, we'll, we'll talk about it. But I just wanted to first introduce this. Uh, Renee, um, I, I actually listened to it a couple of weeks ago, and Renee and there were a couple of folks within her group there that um, are able to... Um, and forgive me, Renee, for not saying this correctly, um, to sort of bring upon angels or speak to angels, mm -hmm. speak to spirits. Um, She's a medium. Right. I, I don't like to say speaking to the dead, but you know, she was able to sort of conjure up these voices mm -hmm. from the other side. And uh, while I was listening on Blog Talk Radio to her show, I actually was able to catch some of these voices, which was phenomenal. And I don't know what she does or how she does it, but she was able to do this on her show. And we are hoping to get her on our show tonight here at Prospect Place so that she can actually maybe possibly introduce us to the spirits here and be able to bring them out so that when we do speak to them, that we're able to get them to answer us back or sort of get some sort of evidence from them. Um, and so that's our first guest that we have on. And then our second guest, Lucy, do you want to explain? Yes, um, we have um, one of my friends, one of our friends, friend of the show, um, and please forgive me, I'm going to mispronounce your first name. Al Althuth. Althuth. Or, or Thea. Thea. Thea uh, she, uh, she has 
um, some very close ties to Prospect Place, and she's spent a lot of time here. It's a very special place to her, and she's a very special person. So um, I believe that's the uh, on hold right now, but I wanted her to call in and talk to the spirits here because I think that then maybe they'll recognize her and respond. So we're hoping to get some activity. You know what? I do want to ask you a question right now. I am absolutely freezing. I'm freezing in too. This one spot. We, we, you know what? <clears throat> Let me just walk over right now. Um, it's 54 degrees that I have on my EMF detector. No. That, no, no, I know. But that's what it was when we first got in. Right. It was not that cold. Literally, my hands are freezing. Look, feel my fingers. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, it is absolutely cold on the second floor. We're on the second floor of Prospect Place, just so that everybody knows. Um, we're outside the daughter's room, um, which I believe is Constant Cox, who uh, supposedly died here. Right. Um, and we'll get into all of that a little bit later. Um, but we're here on the second floor. We were up here for, how long, 45 minutes already? Yeah. And it was not cold like this at not all. Not like this. Right now in this one spot. See, now, now, it's, it, now it's getting warm. Now that we mentioned it. I'm still cold. My fingers are still cold. All right, so why don't we try and see if we can do this. Hopefully, Lucy's able to hold the caller up. And area code that? Yeah, 740. Uh, let's see if we're able to get you on. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Anthony. Hi. Uh, who's this? It's Athea, and you said it good. When you said Athea. <laughs> Athea? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> welcome. For, I told welcome, you welcome. it gets really cold there. Oh, it, it's freezing, but it's absolutely freezing in this one spot. But you know what? The, 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 my EMF detector is... My EMF detector says it's 54 degrees. Mm-hmm. And, um, You'll hit a lot of cold spots in the house. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell us what your experience was here? Because you seem to uh, have had really great experiences, and um, you really know George Adams very well. So I was wondering if you could just sort of share with everybody what your experiences were. And, and tell us your group. Tell us um, when you've been here and, and who, you, who you investigated with. Um, well, I belong to San Joaquin Valley Paranormal Research, and we're a TAPS family team. Um, I live in California, but currently right now, because of my daughter finishing school, I'm here in Ohio. I've also worked as a remote viewer with HPI and Paul Dell Roberts on several cases. Um, what I know about Prospect is it's just... It's like family to me. It's really near and dear to my heart. The first time I went was actually with my sister and a group of her friends. And that's when I met Uncle Paul and, well, I call him Uncle Paul and Uncle Jeff. I call George Uncle Jeff. Um, I Then later on when um, James and I started going together, he came out because I wanted him to see Prospect Place. And, and we got to have it to ourselves that night with my oldest daughter. And so you're really blessed. I, it's a wonderful place to have to yourself. And that's where he asked me to marry him. Was oh, wow. in, the, in the ladies' parlor. We Skyped into our friend Scotty Grunewald's show, The Stew, and that's where he asked me to marry him. Oh, that's special. But um, I've been down alone in the basement. I've felt things. I've seen the K2 light up down in the basement like yeah. you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Can yeah. I ask you a favor? Can you turn down your computer or your, your – because um, we're getting a little bit of uh, feedback in the background. It's yeah. Hear you. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. Please, tell us about the basement. Well, the last time I was there, it was a, a private, informal investigation, and um, Uncle Paul had his niece there and, and her friends, and uh, we started out up in the ballroom, and we really wasn't getting any activity with the K2 or anything. We did have a pebble, like a stone, get thrown like tossed across the floor 
but that was about it. And then we got to the basement, and um, the one the one guy that was in the group, he and I were down, and when you go clear to the far right side of the basement and into the room on the left, um, we started to ask questions, and he saw it light up for the first time all the way in response to the questions, and he jumped back. <laughs> it was so great because he was just learning and training, and it's just really neat to see people get excited like that. I don't know if you've met Randy no. since you've been there, but Randy does the tours, and he's um, very good at it. He knows a whole lot of the history. And uh, he told me a story of when James and I was there the first time together. I was down in the basement, and he had me set clear, clear in the back. And uh, he said that there was a woman that took off running out of there. Just just like a bat, you know, she just took off out of there. And he said it wasn't the footsteps that scared her. And it wasn't the shadow coming towards her that scared her. But what happened next is what made her take off running out of there. And she heard her name whispered in her ear, and she heard, join us. Okay. And that's what missed made her run out of there. Okay. I remember that. You know, from what I've done research on and um, and uh, all of the doc documents that I've looked at, um, I, don't, I, I don't seem to recall any dead entities or negative entities down in the basement. Uh -uh. From, from what, I, what I remember, and you may agree, uh, that the story is that there's some sort of guardian down there, which was supposedly a slave girl or woman who um, who had come to Prospect Place and was hurt. I think it had uh, she had some sort of head trauma and mm -hmm. uh, was taken or was tried to be taken care of here, um, but passed away. And, and so now she's sort of like the guardian, or they call her the guardian, I, I don't know, of Prospect Place or of just the basement. Um, but she seems to roam around uh, down there. Is that the only haunted story or, or spirit story that, that you know of, or no. is there anything else? I, I, my my experiences down in the basement are, um, I, I'm also a sensitive and a medium, and what I felt is children down there and experience. <laughs> um, when Randy told me the story, he said, did that scare you? And I said, no. Because I would have just, I always have felt like it's home. So I would have just been, do you need me? What's wrong? You know, because a lot right. of times when they say those things to you, it's not even bad. It's just that they're lonely. It all depends on their transition that they're in. I've felt Mary there really strongly, Mary Adams. Um when I go past her painting in the upstairs, just really touches my heart. And, and the story of Constance, that touches Hello? my heart, too. Hello? Oh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I enjoy the whole house. I, I've been over there in it all by myself and not felt scared. I've... What? Fallen asleep in the basement <laughs> felt very safe. <laughs> you know what? In being in this house so far, I am so comfortable. I have not felt anything negative or anything like that. I mean, I'm I'm an empath and I pick up on feelings, and so far I have not felt anything negative at all. I mean, I'm absolutely comfortable here, and, and I'm really surprised. I, I didn't know what what to think. It's like home, and you feel like that yeah. when you're there, like you're at home. Yeah. I was so yeah. excited for both of you, especially this being your birthday and you getting to enjoy it. I, I was know. just so That's excited cool. for you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, we have 12 hours in this place, so I, I think um, she's going to get every penny for it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And well, no. I just... I knew it would be like a kid at Christmas for you. 
Oh, I've been like that. I mean, no, this is the best present ever. And I want to thank you, Anthony. I mean, this is just so cool. I mean, it's like this, I, I'm, I'm just happy. I'm just really happy. Thea, I have a question. Um, have yes. You ever had, have you ever had any um, experiences up in the um, in the attic? In the ballroom? Uh, yes, the ballroom, sorry. Uh Mostly just feelings. I've not, I've never seen anything. Um, I've, I've heard voices. I've heard footsteps when no one else was there. Mm. Um, I've, uh, see, I, I understand that a lot of people say that there, you know, there were people that, because at one time the house was abandoned. Right. And there were teenagers that went in and and that did satanic stuff and you know and where the cross is they they say that like they painted over that and 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 they put the cross there. I don't feel any of that there. I I think maybe kids did break into it. I know that they did and and did what teenagers do, but I've never felt that that was that. And there's so many rumors because of the history, you know. And right. a lot of people think that there's tunnels under it and, and there are no tunnels. But those are people that don't understand that the Underground Railroad really had nothing to do with tunnels. It, it had to do with it was hush-hush, like so you kept it underground, and it was a way to protect and get the slaves to safety. I think that um, George Adams, the man who built the house, Uncle Jeff's great-great-grandfather, was a brilliant man. He, um, What he did as an abolitionist and saving so many people and helping them get to freedom really touches my heart. No, I mean, the whole story, everything that I've done in the research, um, I really do give him so much, so much credit for what he's done here. And like I said, I really want to go to the basement. I'm really, um, I just feel very, I don't know how to explain it. I feel very close to whoever's there. When we went through for our initial walkthrough down in the basement, it mm-hmm. was weird because I told Anthony, it's like I just got all these images from childhood. You know, I felt like I felt like a kid. I felt Things I hadn't thought about in a long time all came back to me down there. So, like I said, this place, I, I don't know, I don't know exactly what to expect for tonight, but I am absolutely comfortable here. Absolutely. I love hearing you say that because those are the same feelings I have when I'm there. It's almost like a little girl getting to play princess. Yeah. Yeah. You it know. Is. And 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 not only was he amazing as an abolitionist and what he did to help the slaves, but down in the basement, there is an area that's bricked in, and that was actually back when an old refrigerator system. Okay. So he, oh, he I, oh, a lot of the, people didn't know that. There, there's one room down there in the basement that has the. Um, uh, excuse me, I just ran from downstairs upstairs. But, um, uh, down in the basement, there's a um, looks like a pit, a, a bricked pit. Was that yeah. the underground refrigerator system? Yeah, that was the underground refrigerator system, and they were able to like have the snow and and the cold and bring ice in, and not only that, but in the um, servants' quarters where Uncle Jeff lives. And Uncle Paul lives that take care of the house. Um, right. The well is there, right? And okay. that also provided a lot of safety because many of the slaves worked there. They were paid. They were servants. They worked there, so they could get water. And from the outside, the bounty hunters could not see how much water was being taken into the house because the well was in the house. Right, right. So it was a yeah. means to protect them. Yeah, in the, 
the ballroom upstairs. I noticed that there's balls and there's a couple toys up there. Um, are there any entities up there? Are, are are there children up there? Yeah. Okay. There's um. There's at least two little girls that I know of okay. that roam around. I don't know their name, but I felt them and I've seen them down in their room, up in the ballroom. I've just felt them. But there's also um, there's also a little boy too, and I know that when you're up in the ballroom, if you just take a child, a children's book out of the one child's room, the one with the bassinet and that. If you take a book up there and start reading it, you'll get stuff. You'll feel things. It's okay. it's really an amazing feel. And they like to play hide and seek. Mm. <laughs> you know, I kind of got that feeling when we first walked in. It felt as though um, I, I sort of, I don't consider myself a sensitive or anything like that, but I do. So but you are. At, at certain times, I do get those feelings, but um, I felt as though that they were sort of like hiding mm-hmm. and, and peering out, looking. That's the, the sense that I got, that that's what was in, or that's what I got when we They've first walked in. They've been watching us since we walked in. That's what I, yeah, I agree with that. You, okay. When you go to do some of your EVP sessions, you should play hide and seek. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, today. You'll get some really cool EVPs that way. Okay. Great. Great. Well, well, thank you so much, Pia, for calling in. We really appreciated this. Well, thank you for inviting me to call in, and I'm just really tickled. You two have the best time tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Pia. And uh, maybe in the future we'll we'll, uh, we'll have you on again, and uh, maybe when we do a sort of um, a regroup of the show, yeah. and we go over the evidence. Maybe we'll uh, we'll have you and maybe James call in, and and uh, we can talk about it. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Thea. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you again, and happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, All right. You. Bye. 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 Okay. Now we've got another call, and I believe this is Renee. This is Renee. So we're going to pick her up now. Hopefully this is working. Renee, are you there? Hey, how you doing? Hi, Renee. Hi, Renee. How are you? Hello. I'm doing wonderful. Happy birthday, Lucy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for calling. Now, oh, you are I, more than welcome. I think I, I think I did some botchery uh, in regards to explaining what your show was. So maybe just for the sake of introducing yourself, maybe for like a minute or two, just explain who you are and what you've done on Block Talk and what you do um, uh, in in uh, in your realm. Okay. Um, well, I'm the hostess of Renee Live, and I basically um, it, it's a go with the flow show. I do anything from having authors on to musicians to um, empaths and other mediums, psychics, and there's one thing that I've done all my life and that I really, really like to do, and I've kind of raised the ante the last couple of shows, I love to play with the other side. And um, what I do is, um, well, the last two shows I was able to um, capture, well, I have EVP on my shows, um, and actually... Um, the disembodied voices actually started on New Year's Eve during a special show that I ran, which I wasn't even expecting. So well, basically, it's like a, a, a an entertainment show, paranormal show. I've done readings on the show. It, it's kind of a mixture, but but I I I always have the other side on, and and this is something I'm really embracing. Now, when when I caught your show, um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, which was the second part of your two-part series that you were doing, um, I caught the middle of it and was completely amazed. I um, had tuned in, and at first, I, I and I think I had put this in the chat to you, Renee, and I think you answered back, that I thought you were actually using some sort of mechanical piece of equipment because I was hearing a, um, it was almost like Morse code coming through um, on my headphones while I was listening. Um, and 
in between that, I had heard voices. Um, I couldn't distinguish mm -hmm. what they were. And uh, I posed that question in the chat, and I said, what kind of equipment are you using? And you said, nothing. And then everybody started yes. to chime in and said that they were hearing it, some were hearing it, some were not hearing it, which was fascinating to learn that. And um, to be able to hear some of the voices, and then I think towards the end of that show, I remember hearing a dog cry. Yeah. And um, I didn't get a chance actually to listen back to the whole show to hear everything. But um, was there anything that I missed, or was there anything that you may have heard after you've, if you've listened to the show back again that uh, maybe came I've, through that never been? I've, I've heard, you know, um, you had mentioned um, the clanking, like a, a clanking. Yeah. There was that. Um, the, the increase in the energy on the lines. Um, that that happened. There were a couple of little of little things that were like definite, very definite. Now the the interesting thing is that um, some people hear it, some people don't. I mean, if if you're an empath and there's something there, you're going to pick up on it. Um, the other interesting thing is is that sometimes we can hear things that are going on in our own place, you know, and and maybe it's not being heard on the air, but it seems so real to us. So yeah. I'm, I'm trying to raise the ante um, with each show. The last show was really very amazing. Um, the show before that, if you listen to the archive, was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I really enjoyed um, doing both shows. Both of them were adrenaline rushes, but um, the one even before, the la this last one was spectacular. I just thought, um, and I didn't get to see the first one, and, and I want to go back and listen to it. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I just found you fascinating, and I, I just said I have to reach out to you to, to just let you know that. And then in between our conversation, I had mentioned that we were going to be here at Prospect Place, and said, you know, what a great opportunity. Maybe um, we can have her on the line, and maybe her abilities and skills can sort of bring out whatever entities or spirits maybe within the um, the place or the location of Prospect Place. And um, and you graciously agreed to do that. So we really appreciate it. But you, you mentioned a surprise. There was some sort of surprise yeah. that you may have for us. I'm, I'm a little leery about asking that. What, what, what's that <laughs> surprise? I, it's what? something I have done all my life um, is I can astral project. Now, you oh, know what okay. astral projecting is, right? Okay, wow. I can do it when I'm sleeping. I can do it when I'm awake. I have been known and seen in like three different locations at the same time and still function. <laughs> um, okay. <so laughs> I, wow. I share the love. What can I say? Um, but astral projecting is something that I have um, mastered through my years of, of growing up. Okay, and, and now that I'm getting younger every year, um, your birthday is today. My birthday is Sunday, so I'm growing a year younger. Oh, Lucy. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I asked to project, and I am with you guys right now at the location, okay. and and I'm actually going to see if this works, okay? What I'm going to try to do now is I've increased my energy level you know, the last couple of hours prior to calling in. And I'm going to try to send some energy and spread it over you guys and let me know if you feel a little bit of warming. Um, okay. And I'm going to start okay. with your head, okay? And I'm just going to offer a little bit extra protection for you guys because I just, I like to be protected. <laughs> yes, I feel it's very important. It is. I absolutely agree with you. So go ahead and, and talk for just, you know, like a minute while I do this and concentrate, okay? Okay. And you okay. guys you guys carry in a little conversation and just let me do um, spread this energy and my daughter just woke up. So oh. if I hang up, I will call back. Okay. okay. So um, in the chat, actually, um, Phil W. was asking if um, – it was a if the prospect place was used as an underground railroad, and it absolutely was. That's what it um, uh, in history it is mostly um, famous for or famed for as being one of the Ohio underground railroads. 
in the area here. And uh, originally, from what I can remember on the history lesson of Prospect Place, the um, original purpose of Prospect Place was for farming. Right. <clears throat> and um, it was passed down from, I believe, generation to generation. And the two sons inherited it, and they decided that they no longer wanted to be farmers. One of the sons became a politician. Can, and I, can I just interrupt you? Lucy, feel my ear. It's very hot. Oh, my God, it's warm. Renee, my, my, ears, are, yeah, my ears are, are hot. There you go, guys. Warming up. This place is freezing to begin with when we <laughs> first started the show. I mean, it, 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 my EMF detector says 54 degrees, um, but it's the same amount of degrees as it was two hours ago. But for some reason, when we first started the show, it was getting very cold. Like, our fingertips are very, very icy. It's um, very red. Is it red? It's very red. So I'm starting to feel the the, uh, the heat, I guess, from whatever you're Are you feeling doing, the warmth? Okay. I actually okay. am. Yeah. Good. Okay. You ready to play? We're ready to play. All right. You guys do what you got to do. I'm I'm gonna try and see what I can stir up over there. Um, okay. And I'll talk to you, and you guys can talk to me. Um, but okay. I'll let you guys do the the questioning to the other side. And I'm not feeling anything negative whatsoever in the house. No. That at all. Okay, there, there's nothing. Now, now, when I did just a little bit of reading of the history, um, please tell me, is, is this located near the river? Um, there was the uh, Mosquita, Musque- uh, I can't remember the town. Uh, oh, my God, I we can't just remember. Got on the, yeah, there it was. It begins with there's an there's, M, right? Yes. yes. There was a river here. I mean, it's they don't consider it technically a river anymore. I guess it's been depleted. Um, but it used to be a thriving river, and I think they used it for powering um, back in the, mm-hmm. the late 1800s. Um, but now it's sort of depleted down to, um, you know, creek size, not even right. really any river they would call it. But yes. But it's on the property? <clears throat> it, it's nearby. I you physically haven't seen it, or I didn't even actually look for it, but it is nearby. It's maybe about within okay. less than a mile away. Okay. Okay. Because if it was on the property, I'd say that that definitely would increase any sort of paranormal activity. Um, right. But I'm going to see what I can do about stirring, stirring up some activity there for you. Okay. You guys are protected. You felt the energy. Um, I'm there with you guys. Um, if If you... Now, I'll just let you know that people who have seen me, okay, just in case because you, you may see me, I will um, be white with a yellow glow around me, okay? Okay. 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 So that that is that will give you a clue. That is me. <laughs> okay. okay. So okay. don't film me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so here we go. We're gonna we're gonna go through and you know tell everybody where you are, where we're going through, and and let's see what we can do. Oh, and they don't want to play hide and seek. I heard Ring Around the Rosie. Oh, okay. You're gonna make me play Ring so. Around the Rosie? <laughs> yeah. Well, they want you. They want you to play Ring Around the Rosie. Uh huh. All right. Is well, this one like fun, Lucy? <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> It right. does. Uh, it's, hey, better than Duck Duck Goose. <laughs> Do you want to go into the daughter's room? Yeah. Okay. We're going to walk over into um, the little girl's room, which I believe is um, Constant Cox, which is the daughter of Anna and William Cox. And uh, um, the story that we know of in regards to her death, and she was a very little girl, I think. Um, I think maybe about five or eight, um, I may have that wrong, but forgive me for that. But a very young girl, and um, apparently she died here on the um, property. There was a, um, she had come down with a sickness, and um, I don't know if it was just delusion from the sickness, if it was a high fever. She uh, left her bedroom and walked up the stairs to the portico that's up on the roof, and um, it was during the winter time. And I believe she fell off of the portico and died as she fell to the ground. 
And the story goes that uh, since it was the dead of winter, and back then they really didn't have um, really great tools for digging ground and making a grave during the winter time. So what they did was they stored, unfortunately, stored her um, body in the basement. And in the basement, as we were talking to Thea before, they have this sort of underground refrigeration system. It's basically a hole dug in the ground um, and covered with bricks. And that's where they kept um, probably their meats and, and food and preserved it. Um, because of the coldness in the ground. And that's where they kept her body until the springtime until they were actually able to dig the ground up and give her a proper burial. So Lucy and I are right now standing in her bedroom. And um, as an act of faith, what I had done was I had purchased a doll. Um, upon hearing the story, I felt bad. And so what I did was I brought a doll to the to, to Prospect Place, and I made an offering earlier today with Lucy to her in the bedroom here. So I'm hoping that she accepts the gift, and maybe that she will then come and speak to us. I'm and hearing in the hallway. I'm hearing like steps where we were before. Yeah, you have somebody approaching. <clears throat> Is there anybody here? Constance, are you here? Sweetie, it's okay. You can come out. We mean you no harm. We just want to say hello. We brought you a doll. Okay, there was just something heard on the line. I Let believe it's on here. Constance, are you still here? Why do you still roam the halls in this house? Sweetie, can you make a noise for us? What was that people? I don't know. We just heard a beeping noise out in the hallway. That didn't go off. No. Yeah, my EMF detector didn't go off, but we did hear a beeping noise. Okay. Constance, we're here in your bedroom. Do you want to come and say hello to us? Sweetheart, if you can, can you make a noise, please? Let us know you're here. Did you hear that over the line? No, are you hearing something over the line? Yes. I'm hearing a female voice, a little girl's voice. You'll be able to hear it when you go back and review the show. Constance, that's good. That's very good, dear. Please talk to us. Honey, thank you. Constance, are, are you with Daddy right now? In right here, I'm very cold. Are you picking up anything? I'm, I'm There's a cold spot right here. Right in the middle of the uh, the bedroom we are in right now, which, by the way, is pretty empty. Um, and when I say where's bedroom, the, where's the doll? The doll. Where, where is, do you have the, the doll? Is sitting on a. Um, a desk with a chalkboard on it. It's like a little little tiny child's school desk. Um, and she's sitting on top of that. Right next to that is a bassinet. I'm not sure if it's from the location or not. But uh, it's 
towards the, I think it's the south end of the bedroom. And the bedroom is mm -hmm. pretty much empty. It's just wooden board floors and peeling paint and practically no ceiling. Because she, she wants the doll. She accepts the doll. The Constance, I'm going to put the doll on the floor. Maybe that's easier for you to get, it, for you to take and play with. Okay, I just put it on the ground. I'm so cold. I'm freezing right now. It is so cold in here. Constance, are you here, sweetie? You know what? Why don't we, why don't we kneel down on the floor? Down on her level. Okay. I'm going to sit on the floor next to the doll. That way she doesn't feel threatened. And by the way, if you guys are chatting, we cannot see the chat room. We're, um, we're away from that right now. So um, we'll come back to it a little bit. But. Constance, later on, I want to read your story. Would that be okay? You don't have to be frightened Are you by us. No, we're not hearing anything. Constance, we mean you no harm. We know we know you weren't feeling well and, and we, we just wanna come and make sure that you're okay and if you need anything. Can you let us know if you want anything or, or do you need us to say anything to anyone or tell anybody something? She just said, I'm here. You're going to hear that. You're going to hear it when you play this back. Okay, good. Thank you, Constance. Thank she's, you. She's going through the lines. Okay. Do you mind if I read you the story? We came a long way to see you. Do you like the doll that I got you? She has very long hair. Do you like to comb the hair? I was braiding her hair earlier. Can you tell me what color the dress the doll has? Are there any other little girls here in the room? There's only her. What was that, Renee? I said there, there's only Constance. Constance, it's okay to play with the doll. Go ahead and play with the doll. Can you move the dress? Can you move the dress for them?
That's your doll, Constance. That doll is a present for you. My present. Don't you? Can you say the word doll? She's moving closer to the doll, isn't she? What would that Lucy? She's moving closer to the doll, isn't she? Yeah. I can feel it. Please, sweetheart, come closer. I'm going to step out of the room for a minute. Maybe you throw some mail. Maybe you throw some mail. Okay, Constance, he went out there. It's just us girls now. I think that doll is very pretty, don't you? Can you move her hair? Are you going to give her a name? Annie. (laughs) Aw, that's a pretty name. Isn't it a pretty name? But I think Constance is a pretty name. Mm Mm-hmm. Can you move Annie's hair? Some of her hair is covering her eyes. Can you move that for her? Sweetheart, you're very close to me because it's cold. I can feel you. That's good. Yeah, come on in. Anthony's going to come back and join us, okay? It's shaking. It's so cold. Renee, I have a question for you. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, actually, it was um, brought up in chat, and I'm not sure if it's even possible, but um, if you're able to astral project, is there any way that you're able to see anything here? Maybe if you're able to be here in the room, if you're if you have a vision of maybe something that's in the room that you can describe? Yeah. Yeah, I heard vibrating. Was that from the window? Say that again? Was that from the window? I that, I thought it was behind, to the left of me are windows, and I thought it was towards the back of me and towards the left, near the windows. There's a there's a male who is standing by the windows right now who's watching
He he's appearing to be in like his mid thirties. He's he's telling her it's okay, you know, that you guys are okay. Thank you for that. It could be her father. That's what I'm thinking. Thank you. And she is she is near the doll. I'm seeing the color blue. That's the color of the doll's dress. Okay. Constance, is that your daddy? The whole area is very, very, very cold. I put something on the floor next to the doll. It has a red light. If you go near the red light in the doll, all of these pretty colors will, will, will show. They'll be red and green and blue. If you just go over and, and touch the doll and touch where the red light is, you'll be able to see all these colors. They'll be really, really pretty. EMS detector is just reading a base of two, which has been around the entire home, and it still says it's four degrees. Wow, it just dropped down to 53. But it's been saying you were broken up. What was that, Renee? I said he he sounded broken up. I couldn't hear. Is it doing anything? The temperature went down one degree. It went from 53 to 54. Okay, so she she is getting closer to it. I feel something on my right side. Constance, can you give Lucy a hug, please? That would make me very happy. Can you give her a hug? It's her birthday today. Can you give her a birthday hug? Yes, sweetie, my arms are open. Okay. It makes me very happy. Get your phone and see if there's any callers there. Okay. Maybe we can bring them in with their day. Okay. You don't have to be frightened of me. There's other toys here in the room. I see there's a doll on the other corner, and there's a My Little Pony, which you probably may not know about, but it looks like a little pink horse. And there's a ball, which is on the other side of the room. If there's anything here that you want to play with, you don't have to play with the doll that I gave you. 
Renee's the only caller. Is there anybody out there that wants to call? Please do. We'll put you on with Renee and us. The number is 661-244-9831. Renee, are you picking up on anything else? I'm rocking. I'm, like, rocking right now. I'm feeling the need to rock, like a rocking chair type motion. Is there a rocking chair here that you want us to go by? I keep hearing um, a female voice. I hear it on the um, on the line. In in the chat room, are they hearing it too? Uh, the last time I checked, no, I haven't. They haven't responded. If, if you guys are hearing anything out there while you're listening to us, you know, post it in the chat and let us know if you're hearing anything. If there's anything that's in question, just let us know, and either we can answer it and say it may be us, or maybe it's something else. And at least it'll be a marker so that we can, uh, when we go to archive and listen to it back, we're able to know at what point maybe that there was something. But Renee, this room is. Um, Let's see, what would you say? Maybe right outside here, right outside this wall is the stairwell. Right. So earlier, and I was explaining this in the beginning of the show, that um, as I got to the top of the steps, and it happened twice, when I got to the top of the step, which is maybe about you know, five feet away from uh, the one side of this wall of, uh, of Constance's bedroom here, um, I heard, the first time I heard, either it was one, one woman or two women having a conversation together. And the second time I heard it, I heard it again, um, but it was very quick and faint, but it was something female. There's a there's a female voice that's that's trying to say something. It and I can't quite make out what it is. I've, I've heard it on the line. I know you're going to go back and you're going to be able to hear it. Now, it may also be uh, it may also be Anna, her mother, um, because after uh, her husband left um, and died. She apparently stayed here in the home heartbroken and um, I believe she died by falling down somewhere. Um, she fell down, um, I think it was outside or something like that. She got hurt and uh, she spent the remaining period of her time here in the home and she died. I just heard yes. Thank you, dear. Is there something you want to let us know? We're here willing to talk to you. We don't mean any harm at all. We just want to have a conversation and communicate with you. You can tell us anything that you want. If you don't like us, you can tell us to go away. But say something. I'm feeling very sad at the moment, very sad. Yeah, that was Anna. She's very heartbroken and depressed. Anna, I'm a mom, too, and I know how much you love your child. I know how much you care about her. I can feel it.
and I hope you don't mind that we brought the dog for her. something in the hallway, <clears throat> someone. Is there somebody out there in the hallway that wants to come in? Or do you want us to leave the room? Just let us know. When I first got here, someone said, hey, is that you? Keep hearing from here. Where are you? We'll come to you. Do I go out in the hallway? Okay. Carson, we're going to leave you all here. Renee, we're back in the hallway. Do you feel anything out here now? To the to the left. What's off to the left? I'm feeling to the left. There's two bedrooms to the left of us. There's um oh that would be the doorway to the portico. Which There's a door right there. Or a window. The doorway to what? Like there used to be a porch. The second door down, the second bedroom down. Okay. Yeah, I heard, I'm trying to decipher whether it was a motor outside or a roar like a... Yeah, like that. But there's no... I would have heard a car. Now, there is something outside. Do 
you want to head up? We've got what? How much longer? We've got 20 minutes. Do you want to head upstairs to the uh, the ballroom? Yeah. All right. Renee, we're going to go upstairs to the ballroom. Okay. Now, if everybody is watching, I don't I hate to reference this all the time, but I'm sure everybody out there listening has watched Ghost Adventures. Um, we're heading up to the room right now where um, there supposedly was animal sacrifices here not too long ago yeah. after it was abandoned, after Prospect Place was abandoned. Um, some groups, um, not mentioning any names, used the place um, for rituals. And right now we're in the ballroom where there's a, an etched or painted, watch this stuff over here, let's see, um, cross that's on the brick wall. And apparently this is the area where they did all the animal sacrifices. Some of the supposed um, experiences up here have been scratches on the, the legs, apparently, possibly from the animals that were sacrificed here. Um, and uh, as he was mentioning earlier, um, some of the, uh, the uh, pieces of evidence, which I'm sorry, I cannot remember at this moment right now. Um, but Renee, do you get a feeling up here in the uh, in the ballroom? I'm I'm actually getting my my right arm is out and it's it's pulling to the right. I'm pointing. I'm pointing to the right. To the right. The room is basically almost like a U shape. Um, in the middle of the room, that's where the, the staircase was to come up. Um, as soon as you walk into the place, to the far back is where the cross is painted on the wall. Um, and towards the right, which I'm walking to right now. To the right of the room, which is sort of what you would call then the bottom of the U. And then on the other side has two windows on the far end at the, what you call, I guess, the top of the U. So I'm in the right area. Okay, we're completely dark up here. Basically, Lucy described the room. Yeah, I'm I'm pulling I'm still pulling no to the right. Okay. Is there anybody up here? Ah, uh, I'm getting a bad feeling. I don't know why. Who's here with us? You're watching us. I can feel you. Walk about five feet along the wall towards, if you describe the top of the U. Say that again, Renee. Walk, walk about five feet towards, like, the other end of the room on the right. Okay, we're about five feet away from the wall on the bottom of the U. You want to walk up to the wall. Towards the, you, you, you want to go towards the wall and then walk up about five feet or so. This way. There's a hole in the wall here. Who's here? I can feel you. You're making me dizzy. This room is pitch black. You're okay. You're safe. 
<clears throat> it's hard to see anything. I can't see anything in front of my face. Renee, I'm getting a feeling of dizziness. You're getting a feeling of what? Dizziness. Like I'm off balance. Could be that the room is so dark you can't see anything. No, I wasn't like that. Who are you? I know you're here. I can feel you. Did you hear me? Yes. So it's the entrance of the room where where we're at. We just heard, I don't know, it sounded like somebody threw something. I heard that from here, yes. I've got my DVR camera on us right now. Who's here? Can you make a noise? I can't talk to you if I don't know that you're here. Can you make a noise in here? Move a piece of furniture. There's a couple of chairs in this room. There's a ball. I've got my DVR camera. Knock it over. I just want to know that you're here. Who's here? Show yourself. Tell us your name. Renee, are they still with us? A male. I heard the name John. Okay. I can't keep my balance, Renee. I'm sorry? I can't keep my balance. Just feeling, I Renee, guess, lightheaded. You, know. you, you need to sit down. I'm sitting now. I'm going to spread some energy over you, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. John, are you here with us? Can you move something? Just let us know you're here. Is anybody out there that wants to call in right now? It's the prime opportunity to be a, an investigator uh, from the comfort of your own home. I'm not sure how much longer do we have, we have on the show. Left. We have 10 minutes left in the show. So, guys, call in, 661-244-9831. Um, the line should be working. I'm hoping that they are. Call in. We can put you on the phone right now, and um, you can ask anything that you want. Any question that you want, you can ask it. You can have a conversation if you'd like. But this is your opportunity right now. Not sure if you'll be able to get here to Prospect Place at any time, um, and we wanted to give this opportunity to everybody so that uh, 
You can experience it for yourself. We may not get anything right now, um, or there may not be anything over the airways, but I'm hoping Renee is right that we've got something. Um, but we wanted to include everybody in on this and give you guys the opportunity to speak to the spirits here at Prospect Place. So give us a call, 661-244-9831. We only have about 10 minutes left. And I'm sure my sister is listening and her husband, and I'm hoping Nina is as well. And Connie is, I know she's listening. And um, I, I can't see chat, so I'm not sure else who else is in there, but... Give us a call. Somebody give us a call, and we'll put you through. Can you call us? <clears throat> Are you feeling a little bit better now, Lucy? Yes. We're going to be here till 6 a.m., so... You don't have to talk to us now, but we're going to be here for the next, what, eight, seven and a half hours. We'd love to talk to you. Dia said if I read a book up here, that we would hear something, that we get activity. Do you want to read a book? Let me try it. Go ahead. <clears throat> There's a book here, and it's called A Lesson with Loving Princess. There lived a loving princess, so thoughtful in each way, who took tender care of those she loved every single day. The princess tended flowers and her garden with great care. She gave them drinks of water and said, these I want to share. The princess loved her friends that played there at home and school. Treat friends how you like being treated. This is the golden rule. The princess loved her parents. They were affectionate and true. She said, I love you, Mom and Dad. They said, we love you, too. Okay, that's it. Did you like that? There's a ball at my feet. Can you move that for me? There's something here. Are you getting a, ch- a child or an adult? I'm or picking up else? an adult. No, I'm picking up an adult. Who's here with us? I think it's Anna, because I'm I'm starting to feel really sad again. Anna, that's wonderful. Can you tell us why you're so sad, Anna? I'm like she's squeezing something. I'm I'm opening and closing my right hand, like making a fist, you know, like opening and closing it right now. Is she upset? She's sad. Anna, don't be sad, please. Okay, everything's okay. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Okay. 
there's anybody back there, come forward. Come towards us. We can't see you back there. We both heard you. Somebody wants to like push, like push something, push, like, like you see something like on a table, and you want to like like something small, and you just kind of want to push it with the back of your hand, your fingertips. Mm-hmm. Maybe the ball. Go to the ball. Can you move the ball? Is there a ball? You said there was a ball there? The ball is right at my feet. Can you push the ball? Please. Tap the ball, push the ball. Back there, you heard that? Mm-hmm. They're in the corner back there. They're in the corner. I heard, like, um, scratching noises, like, like tips of a, like a, uh, a cat, uh, yeah. claws on wooden floor. They're in the corner. Well, toy just went off in my living room, and my daughter is sleeping. <laughs> so, hmm. <laughs> I think I have company. Yeah. All right, Renee, thank you so much. Um, you are welcome. I, I, cannot wait, I cannot wait to uh, listen back to this, and I'm hoping that everybody out there was able to hear something um over the uh over the airwaves. Um so Renee, why don't you tell everybody about um your show and what what uh, we'll give you a little opportunity right now, maybe for thirty seconds to plug your next show. Well my next show I'm um basically I'm gonna celebrate my birthday. <laughs> I have I have a couple of wishes, but I'm gonna share only one with everybody. Um if everything goes well, if I get back I'm I'm actually traveling this weekend, and if I get back on time and can make it happen, the show will, of course, go on. If not, then it will be another week or so, but um, celebrate my birthday, and I have one wish and that I will share with everybody, and the word wish should have some sort of a clue as to what the show is about for those who have um, been following my Facebook page and um, on Twitter, so... And, and that's all I'm going to say. But and, and I'm your, hoping your, that your show is called I'm Renee sorry? Live. Your show is called is Renee correct. Live on Block Talk Radio, right? That is correct. It's www.blocktalkradio.com forward slash Renee Live. Great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we've got about five seconds left. I just wanted to uh, say thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we're going to try and see if we can capture anything tonight. And maybe on Friday we will um, have a live show again and uh, uh, let you guys know what we caught and share some of the evidence with you. So Good have, night. Have a great night, everybody. Sounds awesome. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Renee. Take care. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Oh, I went into a little bit of overtime. All right. um, 
we have. Oh, is that 50, 58 minutes? No. Do we have 58 minutes? <laughs> do we? It's recording live. Maybe we do. All right, well, this is an opportunity. Um, we're going to give you guys maybe five more minutes, if we are still live right now, um, to call in. If you guys want to give us a call, 661-244. 9831. Um, I'm not sure if we're actually recording right now. But um, give us a call. We may not be live, but we're recording. Oh. So we could actually keep going and record it. Let's go downstairs. Okay. All right. If you guys are listening to us, we're going to walk downstairs to go back to the laptop where we've got the chat room open and just see what's going on. It is cold in here. Okay. So we're now on the second floor, <clears throat> back to where we were. Um, Let's see if you can hang up. 